Hi everyone, welcome to my Shoreline studio. I'm Sybil Muschik and beside me is Joshua Blanc with the hat. <laughs> and we're going to do some more drawing of uh, items um, totally blind. I do know what's on the pieces of paper, but of course I don't know what order they're going to come in. So it's a way to create compositions uh, in a creative way and to uh, make sure that uh, you know you've got some ideas flowing so we'll see what transpires all right number one number one do a furry texture <laughs> okay that could be interesting number two number two do a seed pod Okay, now that could be quite challenging. Number three. Do the center of a flower. Okay, things are starting to relate already. Number four. A writing tool. Okay. Okay, last one. little one <laughs> make coil like marks well we have quite the challenges I'll get all my stuff together and uh, we'll do an interlude of course and then we'll have everything set up and uh, we'll start with our usual sketches and thumbnails and uh, then we will uh, get going So we've picked some things from the garden. I have what I believe to be a California poppy. And it has nine little divisions in the seed pod. Here's what it looks like as a seed pod. And they're quite tall and um, in the garden. Now we also have uh, an oriental poppy seed pod and I think there's about maybe about 12 maybe more in the center and this is quite fuzzy here so we might be able to use that as a fuzzy aspect now the oriental poppy has um, hairy fuzzy leaves so definitely we'll use that as a background so I'm probably going to be working uh, uh, as a uh, Two, two plates and the writing tool I believe should be uh, a feather and we'll make marks with the feather and maybe include it in the um, you know our design I have two feathers maybe marks with both feathers so let's make a start so we can go either uh, horizontally or we can go vertically. So let's start with horizontal. And uh, let's do the California poppy. And it has four petals. Let's just do the center and off center, of course, rather than, you know, plunking it right in the middle. And it's just a circle, and there are nine divisions. Nine there, okay. And then it just goes like that. We're not going to be too precious about details at this point. Then you have the poppy petals. And I'm just going to do it sort of blind contour style, where I'm looking at the flower and not looking so much at the paper. So I get the proper shape. And this one is behind. And it's behind the next petal. And there's a gap, nice gap there. 
And then it has these markings. And they're quite fuzzy too. And then we can bring a stem out maybe. And uh, I might do the leaf in the background. That's uh, this leaf. And maybe I'll do a nice little leafy thing somewhere in the background. And that should be a good format. Okay, so let's try a vertical. And then we're looking at, let's do the oriental poppy. So they have long, long stems. And you probably, when you're looking at it like this, you're going to see more of a, this kind of a shape, an oval shape with little spikes coming out the side. And it looks a little bit like a funnel. It has a couple of things there. And we can show a little bit of the center, I guess, just to give you the idea that, okay, this is a poppy pod. A few little ridges here. And then you can do maybe a whole number of them in the background. That could be quite interesting and they don't all have to show. Maybe some that are down here. Overlapping is good. We could do coil-like marks in the background. Maybe we can go back to our string and uh, just do some coil-like marks in the background that are um, maybe not too dark, just sort of a, a texture rather than anything else. So something like that. And that will please the composition. It could sort of simulate uh, other greenery in the garden. Uh, we'll have to think about color. <laughs> All right. Um, so then do we drop the feather? Um, let's do one more to see if we can incorporate the feather and make some kind of connection. So, of course, uh, feathers and quills were used for writing. So, in the seed pods, uh, our long feathers, you know, could, could be quite long. That's that connection. So, we could do maybe some feather designs on here. And do some mark making with the feathers. Again, I'm thinking right off the top of my head. It just may not make any sense for a while, and that's why you do the thumbnails. That's a really good thing to do. And let's see, and then maybe our pop pods. And your brains will make the connection. You know, somehow it will make sense as to what's happening. What it reminds me of is a little bit like the, you know, it's, I see connections there. Maybe the rest of you don't. <laughs> but we'll make the connection that, you know, feathers and, and poppy leaves have some kind of uh, similarity. Well, for one thing, they feel sort of, uh, you know, texture-like. Uh, it would be, um, you know, sort of fuzzy. And these leaves are quite fuzzy, so you get that feeling. So the feeling of it might be, so we get another feather in there. Or maybe more poppy pods and... Uh, 
There's another, another leaf, maybe another leaf back here. So we'll have two poppy pods and, and um, at least three to five leaves. And that could be quite a nice, a pleasing design. With a composition, you are always want to do more organic numbers, uh, like five, seven, nine, rather than uh, um, numbers that are, uh, you know, like four, six, or whatever, which are more technical numbers. So like a square is four sides, right? That's more of a technical kind of thing where you're talking about buildings and things of that nature. So with nature, it tends to be, you know, an uneven number. So now the big, the grand decision, which one are we going to choose? And maybe I was thinking of actually working with two plates. Maybe we can take a couple of designs. It doesn't look like this composition is going to be so complicated. We uh, have our tools on hand. We just have to just uh, figure out colors now. And um, Josh will put an interlude in and we will be right back. Well, we're going to make a start on the first one, and that's this one here. And we'll do this one on the next, on the next plate. I think that's probably going to be the most effective. So I have laid out some color, and um, I've added a little bit of open thinner. These are this is phthalo blue green shade, and uh, just a, a light blue. And we'll do a little color swatch. This is a, just a good idea as to how light and dark you want something. If you add a little bit of white to it. You get this lighter shade. And I think that's probably the most effective. I don't want to go too yellow at this point. It may not mix well, and we're also doing a cool palette. So far, so good. Our violet shade will be um, probably this one, Primary Magenta. Uh, this is an Amsterdam acrylic. Um, this one is the uh, open... Uh, um, high flow, golden high flow, okay. And then uh, here's our um, open thinner and I've added that just so the paint lasts a bit longer. And then be sure and mix it well. We'll probably be using some brushes and maybe the end of the um, feather to get the you know, some marks, things, and printing the feather uh, for the last piece. Permanent blue violet. Okay, we just put that over here. It's dangerous color. Dangerous because it gets into things, right? And that will be our um, our little centers for this. Right. So we're going to do this green. And then you have to decide, are you going to keep all the same color? Are you going to darken it as it goes, you know, lower? You know, as it leaves the picture plane, um, you might just want to darken it a bit. And... And even uh, from side to side, you can make variations. It could go from warm to cool. In that case, you would add yellow where the light is if the light's coming this way. And of course, it's reversed uh, when you're doing it as a print. So if you want your yellow on the right side uh, on the plate, you have to do it on the left side. Well, we were worry about that um, today. If you're painting a painting, I, I would be maybe more considerate of those kinds of things. Okay, let's roll it out. Mm -hmm. 
these are my gel press gel press plates <laughs> tongue twister <laughs> And we've achieved a nice gradation here. So what do we need? Okay, so we need to do the drawing of the, the flower and the center. And that means we're wiping stuff out. Now this was a composition this way, so we're going to switch our plate around. And then... Uh, We're just going to wipe. And it probably isn't a bad idea to leave some of that green in there. It will make it look like shadow areas, which will just be to the good. And... Just wiping away. So this California poppy has a, is a nice little um, has four petals. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I get carried away. I'm sorry. My my brain is working overtime, and then I forget that I have to say something. So then we have these gaps. Okay, that that's not a good thing. <laughs> And this one was behind. Might enlarge this petal a bit. Goes in like that. We'll make that darker so that you get the feeling that that's in front and slightly shadowed. We're not going to be too precious about the shape of the poppy because the whole point was to get that center. So we're going to do the center quite large. And then again, so it's sort of painting negatively. I hope you're counting because I'm not. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. We'll add more color into that as it goes. We're going to take off some of these droplets of water. So we're going to be just totally lazy with the leaf and do it as a negative <laughs> and print it. Uh, should print it with the texture down. And we're just going to Press it on there. Oh. The garbunis are busy. Things are falling off. <laughs> I'm on my little light table here. This is why things fall off. And I think it's not quite level, so things tend to roll and do rather silly things. Okay. We're going to take that off. Yep, that's printing really nicely. Now we probably have to hurry a bit because that background is drying. But are we getting a good impression of the leaves? Good. And that sort of satisfies our fuzzy stuff too because it looks like the impression is quite fuzzy. Okay, so far so good. Now because we're working with cool colors, our violet will actually work with the green. 
and that's a pretty good, good color, I think, for the petals. Very close to a color swatch. And then match it up. See, that's pretty close. Okay, so shade in your flower. Again, I'm holding my brush back quite far and do some nice brush strokes if you're following along with me here. Now that's quite wet, so we're going to just make it a little bit more opaque and add a little bit more color. Now our leaf overlapped here, so we're going to just take the color to there. Hold your brush every which way um, to get the effect you want. And one stroke often does the trick. Just going to go over this part because it's a little fluid. Right, okay. Now our violet. I'm just going to take it down a little bit with the green. It's quite a dark, if you can see that it's almost a black, so by adding that green to it, it will darken it and also give it a little more step towards the black. A little bit more violet. Violet is our darkest color, so when you add it, um, it darkens the color as well as sometimes using those kinds of things are better than adding black, which might make it a bit muddy. Right, okay, so what's our shape? It's sort of a fuzzy shape. We're satisfying our fuzzy uh, requirement. Okay. Bring it into the center. Now, poppies always look like they're suffering because they um, have all these little ridges and, you know, they look like they've been crushed, poor things. <laughs> Using these brush marks um, with that in mind it gives it that little extra essence. Okay. Remember, there's four of them. Now, as usual, we'll probably have to wait for this to dry, but we can do the other one while that's happening. Now, of course, at this point, you can add some details, maybe with a finer brush, maybe with a liner. Um, we'll have to consider that. Yes, maybe I'll try and find a liner. We'll take a quick break. I'll find that liner and we will get right back.
So we're going to shore this particular one up uh, in a jiffy here and uh, we were just talking about uh, whether we've uh, you know satisfied all the requirements. Uh, we have the seed pod because it's the center. Uh, we have um, furry texture and we've got the center of the flower. The only thing we don't have is a writing tool. And there was one more. Um, the, the, coil. the coils, right, yeah. So coils um, we'll do for the next one, which is fine. Okay, so let's get the center in. Yeah, we're just going to Nine is there. <laughs> okay. I think it has these little marks. I'll just give it a little bit of depth. And we, this has got fuzzy edges, so that requires a fuzzy requirement. And let's do those poppy crushed lines. Nice thing about uh, gel plate printing is just about every mark you make um, prints. Sometimes that's an advantage and sometimes it's a disadvantage. <laughs> By the way, this brush is a rigger. It's used for lettering, but it's also lovely for doing uh, thin line marks. And holding it back gives you quite a bit of control. Much more control than if you were holding it down here like some people do with their noses two inches from the paper. <laughs> But marks are fresher as a result if you're not, you know, have a tremendous grip on your work. Because then it might look labored. You want it to look sort of spontaneous almost. Okay, so now we had a a stem here and I think we got place to put the stem we'll make it considerably lighter so that it stands out from the leaves somewhere in here and it's fuzzy right so just a little bit fuzzy not as much as the oriental poppies just got a few little marks. So that's our fuzzy texture. Now I haven't done anything much with the background. The flower itself is pretty busy. And then we have the leaves. Hopefully they will print really well. We might, after we do the print, uh, we might do a touch up. Because I think there will be a remnant on the plate that uh, we can work with and registration shouldn't be much of a problem. Right, okay, so we're gonna leave this one. 
so this could be a series so we'll continue working um, you know with the same colors pretty well I might add let's have a look these leaves are far more yellow so we might bring in a bit of yellow and look at how interesting they are they have all these little edges A little bit too complicated for a quick drawing so what we'll do is we'll try and print it on the gel plate right off the bat and just you know move it over like this and then our feather maybe alternate uh, the small feather with big feather and then we'll do um, the, the potty, um, pods uh, separately Anyway, that's so far, that's the cunning plan. <laughs> we'll, we will see how that works. <laughs> Let's bring a small bit of a yellow, a deeper yellow color as a background. And again, uh, because we're working with brushes and stuff, let's add a little bit of open thinner. Mix it up well. There we go. That should give us a bit of working time. Amsterdam paints tend to dry very, very quickly. The open, uh, golden open acrylics, uh, of course, last a lot longer. But sometimes I find uh, the color is not quite as intense as I'd like. So I'm just going to run out a little bit of the green into it as well. And what we'll do in this case is print this level because we want the leaves to be yellow. Otherwise we're going to have white leaves, so we don't want that. Again, my um, plexiglass plate, I can use that to line up. If I'm careful, that will work my baron baron a japanese tool that is good for getting a nice smooth surface if you're doing a background especially for that and that's great oh how do we get these guys in there okay so a nice sort of nebulous kind of background that looks good. Because we want this a lighter green, I'm going to do another layer. We're going to place it on there. And now we have to decide on the color. Since we're not doing the uh, flower itself, I think a darker green is probably okay. We'll do a blue green because then the edges might be um, what we need you will experiment and find your own way through this and of course you know you can always reprint uh, something oops we're going all over the place here If you do your thumbnails and your preliminary drawings and your color studies, you've got everything under control as far as that goes pretty well. Oh yes, I almost forgot. This one is a vertical composition. And so you're, I think we'll start with the feathers. We want the feather texture. Looking good. And maybe a small feather back back on the corner here. I 
and then we'll do the oriental poppy leaves. So there's definitely a relationship, so I don't think we have a problem there. And that makes it interesting. Sometimes combining odd things together um, really creates a creative um, breakthrough. Commercials use that kind of idea a lot. And it gets people's attention. So it could be a good selling device. Getting some nice details. Maybe a little bit more. I like these long vertical lines. We can print this right away. Again, lining up. In this case, we didn't have to wait because the paint's still nice and fluid. Okay, nice. It, it gives us a good background. So when we paint our uh, poppy pods in, they will be in the foreground and they will catch all the attention. And this is a perfect background for that kind of thing. To do a job of cleaning your plate, a little bit of uh, mineral oil helps. Just give it a quick wipe with that. Including my top here. <laughs> and I was thinking it'd be kind of fun to have, once I finish the drawing of these guys, to just dab a little bit. That does a requirement as well, I think. Make coil like marks. We can. Is that a coil like mark? <laughs> And we're going to mix the color. So we have our purple. We have some green. And to neutralize that color, we can add the yellow. Then it's not quite so cool. And it's also closer to the black. Oh, a little bit of. It's going to be nice. A little bit more purple for darkness. That way you'll see the intensity of it. Okay, it seems just a little bit watery, so let's just add a little bit more of the purple. There's our swatch, and not so pale. This is where you're going to have to pay attention to your drawing. And in this case, if you mess it up, you'll, you should be able to wipe it away. So because we're starting with a totally clean background. So don't fret about the drawing part, just do the best you can. Let's make these fairly big. Because this is a vertical format, I think it would be really good for the poppy pods to be quite high. And it'll be fairly graphic. And that base here is a little bit of a... And there's all these fuzzy textures on the... And then this is just a mark. And it can go right off the bottom. Okay. And 
and then you have a they just overlap a little bit so I think in this case we'll probably have to switch colors a little bit instead of making them dark let's make those top ones light you're the artist you can do whatever you want We'll just have to pretend they're catching the light. And you have all these little yellow things on here anyway. So we're just going to start making little marks. To get the paint on the brush, turn your brush like this. And also it makes nice point. So we're just going to do all these little yellow fuzzy marks. Now, are there ridges? A little bit. So we'll put a few ridges in. Keep that on there. And then these lines that we had on here. Now this will flip, right? So if you didn't want this one here, you would have had to put it there for it to be there. <laughs> That's the way it is. So the next poppy pod, uh, we're just going to cross behind. Sounds like a dance step. <laughs> and these pods are a little bit more elongated and uh, they don't have um, fuzzy um, bits and pieces on going down the stem they're just straightforward I'll make it a little bit thicker at the bottom okay so then if we're holding it at this angle And in terms of proportion there, maybe about one, two, three. So that would be about right. Hmm. Well, just for interest sake, let's make this poppy pod green. Let's go back to our yellow and our green here. Do your swatch. Now we're not exactly doing a painting as such so you don't have to worry about light and shade this is more of a graphic representation And if it's a little bit eccentric, that just gives it character. I guess we need to balance with one more. And we'll do the purple. So three is good. So we have the choice of, okay, what do we want to do? The little one or the big one? I think maybe the big one. And we'll do it maybe further down. So again, we'll do it. It's a black or close to black seed head.
give it some volume and have it lean towards that one. Remember there's a little mark here and then just white in this case just for something different okay and then I'm just going to for our coil requirement, just as something interesting. We'll see how that prints. We're just gonna do some marks. Maybe do the twist. Because we have a lot of empty space here, I think it's best on that side. There's our coil marks. See, it's really interesting how things fall together when you start considering it. You've got all these different elements and when you start making connections, one thing leads to another and before you know it, you have a good composition. They won't show up very much in the green, but there'll be just a hint. Gives it some character. And that actually makes a nice mark. Now, if you need to do any cleanup, a uh, square brush helps with that. I might take some of that down. Edges are important. Good, okay, we can leave that for a second. And then we'll do a release coat. Now let's have a look at this one. We're pretty well dry, I think. So we need a new sheet of paper. I'm gonna use the oriental paper for this. Okay, we're rolling the super matte medium out here on our first poppy. And we'll see if that picks up everything. Um, smooth side. Oh, it's just a little bit of a water drop there that dampened the paper. Now that might take a bit of time to, to cook, as we say. <laughs> so we'll probably give this at least a half an hour to an hour. And then, uh, oh, some really smart person um, decided it was better to take the gel plate off the paper, that might be more successful. I haven't really had any trouble, but you can try that. It's certainly a good idea. Well, we'll clean up a bit and uh, we'll show you some results. Uh, we will print the poppy when that's dry, the poppy pods. And uh, we'll see you in a bit. <laughs> So everything's dry now. I've sort of checked it out already. Um, we've done our furry texture, our seed pod. So doing the reveal here, we'll go do the first one. It 
came off pretty good. We, we had some feathers in the back here as well and the, um, the leaves from the poppy, which are kind of free, and our seed pods. These are from two types of poppies, the Oriental and uh, California poppy. So some of it came up a bit up here, and that's kind of interesting. So sometimes these things happen where uh, you have happy accidentals, and it's good to go. So composition not too bad, maybe a little bit vacant on this side. We could have done maybe, a, maybe the feather should have been a little bit more prominent, but uh, as a graphic image, it's not too bad. Now this one on oriental paper. The other one was just multimedia paper. So pulling it off. And everything pretty well came up, which is good. So here's our poppy. Uh, you can see the feather quite well. A um, little bit vacant on this side. You know, I think that needs probably a bit of work. And kind of interesting, this negative effect of the top of the poppy. And um, some good mush brush marks. It's all pretty interesting. So I would work with this a little bit more. But uh, for the sake of, you know, satisfying all these little prompts, it turned out not too bad. So, <laughs> we're at that time of the afternoon again, and uh, thanks so much for watching. Um, really enjoying this kind of stuff. Uh, if you would like to put something in the hat, we'll do it maybe once more. Um, give me a heads up on something you'd like me to try, and not necessarily that we'll draw it out, but you never know. <laughs> And um, take care of yourselves and your families. As always, be kind to one another. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.